Hey, Gavin from ThriveWP. In this video, we're going to look at the WordPress admin dashboard and how you can regain access to it. There are lots of different reasons why you might not be able to log in um, to your admin of WordPress. And we're going to touch on all those issues in this video and the solutions to fix those. So it might be a broken database, it might be an account issue, it might be that you've just updated WordPress or a plugin or a theme and now all of a sudden you've got a white screen or you can't log in. This video will help you fix these issues. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's get started. So the first issue I'm going to look at in terms of why you might not be able to access the admin and quite often is the most um, common issue is when you've updated WordPress itself, a theme or a plugin, you've done that and then all of a sudden you can no longer access the site um, or the admin. Usually this is because whatever plugin or theme you've updated is now not compatible with other things on your website. Um, so just as an example, um, we've had some customers previously where they've updated WordPress because WordPress has just released a new version and they just click update. Um, but what they're not thinking about is the plugins they have and whether they are compatible with the new code in the new version of WordPress. Um, and that's happened a couple of times recently because WordPress has been progressively removing support for old code yet a lot of people are still using plugins and themes that use old code so by updating all of a sudden they're breaking their websites now the easiest way to get around this um, is to log into your ftp of your site which gives you access to your files so basically what you need to do is you need to be able to disable all of your plugins and possibly themes so that you're then able to regain access to the admin and then you can start working through which particular plugin or theme is causing the issue. Okay, so what you do, and we're presuming that you're, uh, you know, if you're watching this video, you're kind of prepared and ready to kind of start doing these things through FTP, through looking at your database and so on. We use the program FileZilla because it's really easy, but you might need to look up how to kind of manage your FTP. So we have, set up a staging site so in terms of security this is going to be deleted after the video so trying to copy stuff from it is not going to make any point whatsoever um so uh this is just a, a staging site this is our site's files okay and so what we can do so just imagine for now that our site is now um not accessible for whatever reason we can't log in or it doesn't display um, so we will log into our FTP of our site we then go to the WP content folder now depending on if you have a suspicion that it's a plugin then all you need to do is rename the plugins folder if you think it's a theme then you can rename the themes folder or you can do both so all you need to do is um, just rename it It doesn't really matter what you rename it um, but we can just rename it old or we can say off. It, it really doesn't matter. It's just so that it's not the normal just plugins. So we've renamed that. And what happens is because we've renamed that, our, all our plugins for this site will now be disabled. So if we go into plugins, you'll get these errors. Okay, the plugin so-and-so has been deactivated due to errors, blah, blah, blah. You can ignore that, it's fine. It's just been deactivated because we have renamed the folder, okay? All right, so it shows that we have no plugins. Um, don't worry about that. It's just because it can't access the folder, but what it means is it's disabled everything so we can log in. Okay, once we've logged in, then what we need to do is we need to go back and put the name back to what it was. Okay, and if we come back to the website and refresh the page, you'll then see all your plugins, but they are all now disabled. Okay, so then, to work through the issue, what you need to do is activate each plugin individually. So activate one, go back to the website. So we've activated that one, we go back to the website, we refresh the page, see what happens. Is it working? Is it not? No. Okay. Go to the next one, activate that. So you keep doing that and working through all of them until 
um, you find which one is causing the problem. So once you've found which one is causing the problem, then you need to think about looking, is there any updates for that plugin? Is there uh, an alternative for that plugin? Um, what is it that's in that plugin that's causing a compatibility issue? So that's how you do that. And you do exactly the same process for the theme as well. Um, so again, if you just went to themes and rename the folder, um, this is exactly the same process. What happens is when you rename the folder of the theme, the uh, WordPress will default to um, WordPress's own default theme, theme which is usually uh, 20 something or other. Um, so let me just refresh the page. So you, again, you'll get errors and the child theme is here, but it won't work because the main theme isn't there. So if we then go back to turning that back on, we'll refresh the page again. Okay, so as you, as you can see, everything's kind of disabled at the moment. All right, and that's absolutely fine. That's just what needs to happen um, in terms of trying to troubleshoot. Then you would uh, basically have a look at your theme, see if there's an update. Again, just the same as the plugins. If there's not, you might need to find an alternative or what specifically in the theme is causing the issue. But that's how you'd regain access to your website if it was something to do with an update. And I would always start here. If it's kind of just suddenly happened out of the blue um, and you haven't really done anything other than maybe updating some themes and plugins, um, or maybe you haven't updated at all, but you set things to auto update, that can happen as well then this I would say would be your first port of call okay so that's the first issue um, you can look into the other thing that's really quite common is a is a database issue with the the kind of credentials so to speak so if I just um, we've got everything back to normal on our staging site so the database details are in a full if the a file, sorry, called wp-config. Okay, so if we open this, okay, and again, this is a staging site, so anybody trying to hack into it, it's going to be gone after this video. <laughs> um, this information is all the information to access your database, and you should not share it with anybody. So don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so this is database name, the database user, the database password. So if any one of these is slightly wrong, um, you won't be able to access your website because the, the the system isn't able to access the database where all the information is stored. So if I just change one character in this password, click save and update that change, what you'll find is that we visit the website and it will say error establishing database connection. Okay, and this specific message is basically saying we cannot access the database. So usually the majority of the time it is because of those details. So I would double, triple check these details to make sure they are correct. So if I remove that intentional error, um, go back to the site and refresh, it's, it's working fine. Okay, so that's another thing that can happen. All right, um, now there's also another thing that's kind of similar to this um, and it's to do with the database and you may get an error similar to that, but it's to do with the, the, the database being corrupted or not. Something's kind of gone wrong with it. Maybe a table has been overloaded and essentially the database needs to be repaired. Okay, so to do that, what we firstly need to do is we need to get this little bit of code. Okay, which basically says allow repairing of the database true if that said false then it would be basically saying don't allow it we need this little bit of code and we need to put it in the config folder where our database details are but we need to put it at the bottom okay and we can put it um usually the best place to put it is just here where all this information is okay um or you can put it at the bottom it doesn't hugely matter where you put it okay so we'll pop that in there I don't think we've already got it. Uh, nope. Put that in there, click save, and ensure we kind of update that file. Okay, so now to repair the site's database, we need to go through 
the domain, then WP admin, okay, and then uh, mate, okay, and then repair.php. Okay, and then what happens is it'll take you to this screen. And we have two options. We can either repair the database or we can repair and optimize the database. Okay, um, and it gives you a bit of information about both. Um, we're just going to go repair and optimize. Okay, and then what it'll do, depending on what your database is using in terms of tables and what have you, there's various different things. Um, there's MySQL, Myra database, and so on. So you might find some errors where it says fail to optimize um, so and so table, but it's doing a recreate. So basically, this database, this particular database, is running on Myra DB. Uh, so it doesn't support optimizing, but what it does do is it will recreate the table. So it will kind of remove it, but then recreate it, which is similar to what was optimizing. So it runs through everything. Okay, and then it says repairs are all complete. And then what you need to do is then remove this line from your config file so that nobody else is able to access this URL and start repairing your database all the time, because that's not what you want people to do. So you've done that, you've repaired the database, you come back, you remove that line from the WP config file, save it and upload again. Okay, and you'll notice once we've removed that line, if we tried to go to that URL now, it basically says you can't because you haven't got that URL. So that's kind of a bit of a security feature. Okay, so again, that might have fixed the database issue. One of those two things will fix it usually, either the credentials um, or, or the repairing the tables themselves. So that's the second problem with not being able to access your database. Okay, you might have things like a white screen. Um, again, this can still um, be caused by the things we've already touched on and talked about. Okay, uh, everything I'm talking about in this video, by the way, will be in this post and the the kind of the codes you need to copy, like the repair one um, and the database one and so on. So that's all here. Um, incorrect password issues. So again, this might be something where you've set a password and you've forgotten it or you've um, typed it in wrong a couple of times and then maybe a security plugin or what have you has locked you out of your site for so long. Um, there's a few things around that and there can be at times if you have been hacked, so if your website has been hacked, um, then the hacker may have removed your admin privileges. So they may have deleted your account altogether or they may have changed your account so you no longer are admin, you're just a normal user so you can't access the, the admin side of the site. So we have another video that um, we will link to here or in the description, which goes through uh, editing your password in the database itself or adding a new admin user in the database itself. Now that's really helpful. So if you have no way at all um, of accessing your website, absolutely no way, um, then that is your option is to go through the database um, and so, like I said, the, that video will be linked in the description. Um, PHP errors, again, you know, that is usually tied to um, incompatibilities with uh, plugins and themes. Um, so this is all just talking about, like I was just saying, adding users via the database. Um, but we do have a video for that as well. Um, sometimes you might have problems associated with cookies. Um, and that can be as simple as clearing your browser cache. Now, if you search, you know, whatever, Google, um, how to clear your browser's cache. So if you're using Chrome, you can search how to clear Chrome's cache or how to clear Edge's cache or Firefox or whatever browser you're using. That will often fix the problems. Um, you can also just as a, a kind of quick check rather than clearing the cache is open a private window in your browser because that doesn't use um, cookies so you can visit your site in a private browser and see if the issue is still there if it's not there then that means it is a cache issue and you can clear the cache from your browser okay 
Um, PHP errors, like I said, will often be to do with plugins and themes, but it may also be to do with your memory limit. Now, quite often the WordPress default is, is lower than 256, um, or it might be that your servers is lower than 256. Um, it's always recommended as a minimum to have it set at 256. You can set it higher, but 256 is usually fine, and that's 256 megabytes. So you need to add this snippet of code, okay, into your WP config folder that we opened earlier, which is in the kind of the main directory of your website files, okay, it's just here. So what you need to do is you need to add that just like we did earlier, and we've already added this. Um, for this particular example, we've got uh, 128, okay, but we can change that, say, okay, WP limit, memory limit is 256, okay? And we tend to usually set it at 256, because um, it just gives you a bit more room. So we click save, we click update, and then our memory limit on the site is then 256 megabytes. So that just gives the memory a bit more time to process things, a bit more room to um, manoeuvre, so to speak, in terms of it managing, um, you know, loading different pages, different scripts, different plugins. So that's another thing to look at if you're hitting PHP errors specifically. Okay. Um, again, if you've got 404 errors and pages not found, um, it can be at times something to do with the HT access file. Um, it might be that actually that page just doesn't exist anymore. Um, but if you know for a fact that, say, for example, the home page is there because the website is there, then it might be that um, it's a HT access issue. Or again, it may possibly be a WP config file issue. Um, so first things that first is you want to check through this file. Make sure you've got your database information correct. You've got your um, salt's correct, which um, so you can have in within here. So these are all called WordPress salts, okay? Um, making sure that you haven't got anything here or you've added any directives that are wrong um, that are causing issues, okay? And so for your HT access file, it's a dot file. So it's a, it has a dot beforehand, so you may not always see it. Um, within, you know, your file browser. Um, but usually with FTP, you usually see these folders, uh, files, sorry. So what you need to do is you kind of open up your, your current one, okay? And if you're kind of familiar a little bit with certain things, you can have a look and see what's going on, um, see if there's anything wrong. Uh, but often the easiest thing to do, okay, is in the first instance is we would rename this one just as we did with the plugins okay so we've we've already got an old one there but we've renamed that one as well so essentially now we have no ht access folder uh, file so to make to then force the site to recreate it um, we go to settings in the wordpress admin okay and we go to permalinks okay and we wait for that to load once that's loaded we don't change anything all we do is go straight to the bottom and click save Okay, and what that does is that forces WordPress to recreate a, a kind of default HT access file based on, you know, your website and your settings and so on. So if we just kind of go out of uh, the main directory and then back in, you'll see that we have a new HT access file automatically created. Okay, and it's now um, given us a default WordPress HT access file information. So by doing that, you may well have fixed your 404 error, your, your kind of loading error um, on the website. Okay, so that, that is the other situation where you might not be able to access your site, um, but it might not be, uh, you know, access in terms of logging in. It might be that just you can't see your page. Um, so that's something to look at as well. Uh, so that's it really. I mean, we've looked through all of the different options that are usually the most common causes of not being able to access your website or your admin or logging in. Um, like I said, check out the other video in the description about how to add users in the database or how to change your password in the database. So sometimes you might, the, the, the 
common situation is you've set up a website, you've um, you know created your account obviously, but you've not really accessed the site for a long, long, long time. And over that time, you've changed your email address, and maybe the email address you used to set up that account originally, you no longer have access to. So using the kind of reset password option in WordPress isn't going to help you because all it's going to do is send a, a reset email to the email address that you no longer have access to. So the way around that is to go into the database, find your user account and change your password in the database. Um, but like I say, follow the video in the description because that will show you step by step how to do that. So I really hope that this video has been helpful. Um, it's, question, it's a question that we get asked all the time and this post has been really popular time and time again. Um, but we felt like a video kind of walkthrough would be would be really helpful for our visitors. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and, you know, let us know if you have any ideas for, for other videos. We'd be more than happy to kind of have a look at those. So see you next time.